As an experienced business broker and m and advisor, I see hundreds of deals and I've analyzed hundreds of deals as well. Now, in today's video, I'm going to give you the top things to look for when you're looking to buy a business. Now, this comes from experience of doing many deals. Now, stay till the end because number five is the most important one and that one alone can help you double your payday if and when you decide to exit the business you just bought. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I am your host, Leo Landaverde, business broker and commercial lender helping you buy and scale a profitable business. If you are a small business owner looking to dramatically increase your wealth by buying a profitable business or an employee, W2 employee sick and tired of the rat race, wanting to leave the rat race behind by buying a profitable business, you are in the right place. Please subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to hit the bell and you'll be notified every Thursday when new content comes out. All right, so here are the five things to look for. But before I do that, I want to give you some context. I've been in the M&A game for 20 years. I have bought and sold many businesses. That's are my own businesses. I've also been involved either on the buy side or the sell side of business acquisitions, particularly in the lower middle market business uh, market of buying businesses that are at least $500,000 worth of SDE, uh, up to millions of dollars worth of SDE or adjusted EBITDA, over $100 million worth of transactions. So. I would like to think that I know a thing or two that I can pass on to you. So these five uh, things to look for come from having analyzed hundreds of deals and been involved in over 25 transactions from beginning to end. Number one, buying a business, if you're going to buy a business, you better make sure that it makes tons of money. You're not, it's not like you're buying a real estate you know, where you're looking for $100 a door. Now, for a business, for it to make sense, the, comp the transaction itself is very complicated with a lot of moving parts. You got a lot of people working on this deal to get it done. So if you're going to do that, um, what I would tell you is start with how do you know that a business is making enough money? We'll start with the debt service coverage ratio. It's got to be at least two to one, twice the cash flow over the debt service. I like this. We have students inside my group that are doing at least three to four times the, debt, uh, the cash flow over the debt service. This one is non-negotiable. If the debt service coverage ratio isn't there, it's not even worth looking at it. I promise you. We start with the cash flow. We end with the cash flow. You're buying cash flow. You're going to have an ample runway for all the things you want to do. Now, you obviously, you have to have a very profitable business on an industry that has probably high margins that you can comfortably pay your operating expenses. Uh, be able to pay your cost of goods sold, your operating expenses, healthy bottom line profit of at least 20, 10 to 20 percent or more net income as per the tax returns. Now, and you have to be able to pay yourself handsomely with huge net uh, uh, W-2 for you because while you're buying your assets into a corporation on LLC, you have to be able to pay yourself a salary and it has to be a handsome salary. Otherwise, why is the worth? What is the strategy? You don't want to buy yourself a job. You want to buy yourself a business that allows you to eventually insert a general manager or what we call a GM into it so you can actually step back and do other things, buy other businesses, run other things. That's how they're really wealthy people do it. So, but there are other things that you're going to need cash flow for. First and foremost, you want to make sure that you have ample cash to cover your working capital for the day-to-day, month-to-month running of the business. You have to be able to produce enough income to service the debt. Also, there are, depending on the industry that you're buying, you may need capital expenditures. So if you're buying a business that has equipment or machinery that needs to be upgraded, maintained, fix from time to time or eventually it will run out you are going to have to buy equipment the business has to produce enough cash flow to be able to, for you to replenish the fixed the furniture fixtures and equipment on the business and that'll be evidence when we're doing the analysis to so kind of figure out what the trendings are on the operating expenses the capital up we call it capex so it has to make money it has to make tons of money now when in doubt I'm, you know i'm giving you away my cash flow calculator number two the business has to solve a major problem. The business model is predicated and centered around medicating and solving a particular customer, a problem customers have. This product or service that you're offering on the business that you're looking to buy cannot be a luxury. People need medication, they don't need vitamins. Let me explain. Businesses that solve problems will always be in demand. 
When it's something that you absolutely have to do it, whether it is mandated by the government as in regulatory compliance, for instance, there will always be accounting firms, engineering firms, and law firms because without them, you really can't do anything. Well, think about it. Um, if your toilet breaks, do you have a choice unless you know how to fix it yourself? You're going to have to get somebody to help. You're going to have to get a plumber. If your heating goes down in the summer, you're going to need to be the HVAC people. If there's a wall in the, you know, a hole in the wall of the house, you're going to have to fix it. If the roof is leaking, you're going to have to fix it. You see what I'm saying? Is if your landscaping is out of control, if your pool goes down, it needs to be fixed. So businesses that solve problems will always be in demand. Examples of those popular businesses, right? As I said, you know, AC blows in the summer, you call the HV company. Toilet is flooding, you call the, um, you call, you call the plumber. Now, one really business that I really like is the home uh, flood damage and home remediation. If something happens and your house needs to be uh, flooded and you need, you, need, you need to be relocated, insurance companies get involved in that. But that is a really big, big business and very profitable business. Anything that surrounds the home where you need to fix it, it it's a good business. If a tree falls over your house, you're going to need to call the roofing company and the tree trimming company. Hey, so are you stuck in trying to figure out how to buy a business? I'm sure you have questions and I have the answers. Could be that you don't know how to value the business. Uh, when should you talk to the lender? How much cash flow do you need? A down payment? Do you need working capital? If so, how much? Do you need post-closing liquidity? How, what does that look like? When do you talk to the M&A attorney? I'm sure you have questions. I would love to guide you in your journey. Now, if you're watching my video, you probably are looking for a business to buy. Connect with me. Reach out to me. My email address is either up here or down, down there in the description section of this video. And let's connect. Drop me a comment below and let me help you in your journey of buying a profitable business. So, what are examples of vitamin type businesses? Businesses that essentially are a luxury. You know, your vacation, if you have a travel company, you know, I, I, I know some people are really big on spa businesses. Uh, um, if, if, you know, it would be a good idea to go to the spa and to get some medical spa, all of that is great. But if it is not medically necessary, if something happens in the economy, people are going to have to cut back somewhere. Now, when people cut back somewhere, the first place that they cut is the luxury stuff. Right? So luxury goods, luxury services are the first thing that goes out the window when there is a recession uh, or inflation is out of control. We're in a political election year. Things are uh, in, flex, I mean, in influx. There's just a lot going on in the economy right now. So people that tend to you know, want to save money, they're going to cut back on luxury items, but they're never going to cut back on requirements and, and urgent matters that need to be fixed. Number three, the business has to be what I call triple proofed. What is triple proof? Recession proof, AI proof, pandemic proof. So the recession proof, economies go up and down and they go on cycles. So every time that a cycle comes around, for instance, let me give you the most obvious one, real estate. Real estate goes in cycles. A pro a property values will continue to go up until something happens. You know, back in the 2007 and 2008, a lot of these phony mortgages, 0% down, were actually out of control. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac got in trouble for that. And all of those industries serving the real estate market tanked when the real estate market tanked. So when you're looking at you know, businesses, you want to make sure that whatever situation it's in, you want to make sure that you can actually withstand another recession. So, but if you, chances are, if you're in the pain business versus the vitamin business, as I said earlier, you have no choice but to take care of things. So, um, you have to, so, so that is on the recession, uh, on, 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 on the economic conditions and the factors. Now, there is the AI proof. A lot of people are very worried about artificial intelligence and what's going to do to businesses. AI, being, AI has been the talk of the time for the last two years. And you know what? The topic, it's not going away. A lot of business buyers see it as a threat. But I don't see it at all. If you are becoming the business owner, if you are an employee on in an industry that is susceptible to AI, then you should be worried. But if you are the business owner, AI can be a tool for you to be able to help you cut expenses and be able to make more money. So you want to be, you're either going to be on the losing end of AI or you're going to be on the other side of AI, on the winning side. So you are 
If you are the one that can institute AI to automate process and save on operating expenses, then you're on the winning side. Guess what happens when you buy a business and you infuse it with AI? It's going to help you operationally and financially. Here's what you should know. That there is a difference between jobs that AI will eliminate and jobs that AI will enhance. You want to buy a business that can be enhanced with AI or that AI poses no threat to. For instance, accounting firms, law firms, engineering firms, healthcare, HR, marketing firms, uh, white collar type of businesses that you work from a desk or remote uh, can be dramatically enhanced with AI tools. On the other side, you got plumbers, electricians, HVAC technicians, repair shops. AI poses little threat because this is manual things that have to be done. They don't have to be done through a computer. So if it is a manual, the trades, AI has going to have very little impact on that. Now, so that's that. Number three within that is going to be that it is pandemic proof. Now, COVID woke us up to the reality of what could happen when the world gets shut down. Business owners, you want to put yourself in a situation and assume that in your lifetime again, you're going to go through another COVID or COVID-like type of pandemic. Uh, any global catastrophe can shut your business down. So if you're in a business that you're constantly in touch and touching people, for instance, I think in nail salons, hair salons, if something like that happens, restaurants, whether it is, unless they are takeout, but if you're in a sit-down restaurant and you're in constant contact with people, pandemic hits, your business will be shut down. That's really what happened to restaurants and all of those hair salons, nail salons during the pandemic. 2020 and 2021, they were basically shut down. A lot of them went out of business. So you want to think ahead and figure out if your business can potentially be pandemic proof and the proof is already, we already have historical evidence on what businesses don't do well. So number four, the business has to be in a growing industry. A stagnant industry means a struggling industry. There are a lot of industries out there that are sort of been not only, not just not growing anymore, they are actually stagnant or declining Think of it, what would have happened if you would have bought a blockbuster video franchise right before Netflix when, if you had, if you had had the foresight of knowing that there was going to be a Netflix taking over blockbuster video, would you have bought, invested it? Probably not. So you have to understand where the trends are going. You have to watch the news, read, you need to be, you need to be a voracious reader if you're going to be a business owner because you need to stay what entrepreneurship is, be able to identify something that hasn't happened, where there is a need, where you can accommodate yourself, be early in the trend. Early in the trend and growing industries are good, but you don't want to be in a stagnant industry or an industry that is in decline. So, massive business growth only happens in fertile, fertile industries, industries that are growing. Examples of growing industries. Trades, HVAC, electrical, roofing, flood and home remediation, plumbing, landscaping, etc. Septic cleaning, niche manufacturing businesses, tax and accounting, IT, cybersecurity, and managed service providers, education, uh, SaaS, serv service as a server, so, I'm sorry, so, service, uh, software as a service, solar power, telemedicine, pet care, senior care. I actually talked to somebody today who is actually looking to buy a business, who's joining, who's joining my program, who is in the non-medical senior care. It's a booming business. Think about baby boomers retiring. If, if, if there is a business that is services the needs of the baby boomers, it's a good business to be in for the next 10, 20 years. Renewable energy and e-commerce. Now, there are niche businesses in e-commerce that are bulletproof or are basically proof against Amazon. So, enough of that. Number five. The business has to, has to have grease a value. And remember I told you about the uh, very beginning of the video that this one alone can double your payday if you're going to ever flip these businesses. And so you guys know when I'm looking at businesses to buy, I want a business that I can actually double in the next five years. I give myself five years to what, double whatever business I'm going to buy. And most important thing is it has to be in an industry with a lot of units. I'm going to give you an insider rule of thumb. The industry that you're buying into should be made up of at least 25,000 other businesses nationwide. 25,000 businesses is key. So if your business, the business that you're looking to buy is so unique, there's only a handful of them in the country, think twice. Because they have to be enough units to create resale value. So for instance, if you have enough 25,000 plus competitors, now who can you sell to eventually? You can sell to another competitor. 
You can sell to a private equity group if your business is big enough. You can sell to a family office, or you can sell to somebody who wants to get in the industry, but the industry has to be big enough to support other players. All of the businesses and in industries that I listed under number four fall into that category. There is software and there are tools that I have if you want to know more about working with me and my group that we use to acid test this premise. It has to have at least 25,000 units. This is important because it means that there will be a he healthy industry economics and the microclimate within that industry will be healthy enough to provide supply and demand. Now, if you're looking at industries where there are trade groups and they meet once a year and there is continuing ed, those are great businesses to pay attention to because you not only for off-market deal sourcing and you're talking to brokers, this is a business where all of these industry insiders congregate to exchange ideas. Prime example of a ministry that has a lot of units. So again, a lot of those industries I already mentioned. So. What you really want is, so here, here's what it all comes down to. Whatever business that you decide to buy has to make a lot of money. So let me recap. All right. So I want to make sure that you, it has to make tons of money. By that means, ideally, you want to be looking at businesses that are at very least have 300000 of seller discretionary earning. Plus, if the business is not even producing that, it's probably worth not looking at. Some of my students are actually buying businesses in the north of six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars worth of selling discretionary earnings. Think about it. That is crazy. Eight hundred thousand dollars worth of selling discretionary earnings is sixty-five to seventy thousand dollars a month. Life-changing deals. Number two, I said it has to solve a problem. It has to be in the pain side of things, not in the vitamin side. It has to be triple proof. A recession, AI, and pandemic. It has to be in a growing industry, not in an industry in decline. It has to have great amount of units to produce resale value. Guys, this is the kind of business that I look for. If you want to connect with me, let's connect. Thank you for watching. For a limited time, I'm giving away two of my top weapons, secret weapons for you guys to buy a business. One is my Deal Analyzer 2.0, which is a workbook that allows you to do everything, including the business valuation, to know exactly the kind of offer you want to make, exactly how much cash on cash return, debt service coverage ratio, and the like. And the other one is my Business Buyer's Checklist, which is a six-page document that covers everything you'll ever need when buying a business. Those are my gifts to you for watching my video, and hopefully you subscribe to my content. Click on the links below to download.